Hi. Today we're going to look at an easy technique to make a reflection using a smart object. These are very popular and are really simple to make, so let's see how it's done. First, if you're going to use a photograph, not a graphic, remember to take the picture so the bottom of the object is at eye level. It should look flat, like this. Otherwise, it's going to look like it's balanced on a point, and that's probably not what you want. To keep things simple, we're going to use a graphic. In fact, I'm going to use a shape, and I'm going to put it in a new document. So I'm going to start out by going to File, New, and choosing a document that's 512 by 512 pixels. It's going to be for the screen, so resolution of 72 pixels per inch is perfect. RGB color, 8-bit, that's great. For the background contents, I'm going to choose transparent, not white or background color. That way we'll start out with a layer that is floating. We won't have to worry about getting rid of a background or anything like that. Just click OK, and there we are. One layer, transparent, ready to go. I'm going to use a shape from the shape tool down here, the custom shape. Um, you'll find that on the toolbar. It might be hidden under the rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, or line tool. Since we want the custom shape, if it's hidden under any of those, all you have to do is mouse over it and hold down the mouse button until this menu flies out and choose custom shape. These leaves are fine for the shape. I want it set so that it instantly fills with pixels, which is this little icon here on the far right, and that's what we've got. I'm going to use the little flippy triangle here to show the custom shape options, and I'm going to change the custom shape to fixed size, 300 by 300 pixels. That way it'll immediately be that size when I make it, and since I have something else that I want to show you that's going to require a fixed size, that's what we're going to use. So all I have to do is hold down the mouse button, I can move this anywhere I want, we'll put it about there, and when I release it, it's filled with pixels. We want this to be a smart object, so I'm going to go over here to the Panel menu for the Layers panel, and I'm going to choose Convert to Smart Object. As soon as I do that, you get a little badge in the corner here that shows this is a smart object. If I hold down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, I can drag out another copy of the smart object. That is another instance. It's not actually a different thing. It's another copy of the same thing, and they're still attached. That's important, as we'll see later. Then all I have to do is go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical, and get the Move tool, hold down the Shift key to constrain the movement, and drag it straight down, and I have started my reflection. As you can see, that's the idea of a reflection right there. I would like this to fade out some, though, so I'm going to make a mask. We'll go over here to the Make New Mask icon, make sure the mask is selected, make sure that the colors are black in the foreground and white in the background, and then I'm going to use the Gradient tool, which might be hidden under the Paint bucket, once again, sometimes you have tools piled on top of each other, but they're all really there. Get the gradient tool, make sure it goes from the foreground color to transparent, that it's a linear gradient, mode is normal, it is not reversed, and it is transparent, and then all I have to do is hold down the shift key to constrain it, and drag from the bottom to the top, and that fades out the reflection. We'll fade it out a little bit more by reducing the opacity, and there you go. I'm sure you've seen these everywhere, and that's how easy they are to make. Now we could stop here, but we're not going to because we've got smart objects and we can do a lot more. So I'm going to start next by choosing the layer, not the mask, because I wanted to put a little bit of blur on this reflection. I'm going to unlink the mask and its layer, because otherwise anything I do to the smart object layer over here is going to affect the mask, and it's going to change too. And I like that the way it is, I don't want it to change, so I'm going to unlink them. Then go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's make that about 1.5 pixels. That's a nice slight blur. Click OK. Get the Move tool, and because this leaves a little transparent line there that I don't want, I'm just going to use the arrow keys to nudge it up a couple of pixels. And there we go. Now, as you can see, this is a smart filter on my smart object and I can disable it by clicking the button, and look what happens over here when I do that. The blur goes away, so I can have it or not have it, depending on whether or not I enable it. I can also open it up, and I can change the blur, but let's not do that. And there's more we can do. We could stop here, but let's not. If I double-click on one of the smart objects, it will open up as a temporary file that's called a PSB file. And this is the Photoshop large format, and you can do all kinds of other things with them, but in this case, it's just a temporary file that shows what the smart object actually has inside of the container that is what a smart object really is. 
if I hide this layer and make a new one, and over here on the color swatches, I tap X to swap the foreground and background color. And let's get a different shape from the shape tool. Um, let's use this one. The rest of the stuff is still set up. So if I just click in the corner, I can change the shape. And watch what happens to the image when I save. It updates. And because these were instances of the same object, it updates both of them. And I have the same blur and the same reflection and the same settings and the same everything, just like that. But wait, there's more. If you go to Layer, Smart Objects, Replace Contents, you can put anything that you want into the container that is that smart object. This works best if the two documents, the smart object PSB file and the image you're going to replace it with, have the same dimensions. That's why we used fixed dimensions on the shape when we made it. I've already made one that's 300 by 300 pixels, and I've called it Pretty Shape. If I just click the Place button, it swaps out one image for another image inside the container, and I have something new that's the exact same settings, just like that. Let's open up this one. As you can see in this smart object, we have a lot of other layers, and some of them are themselves smart objects. See the little badge that shows us? In fact, we have four copies of the jewel that's here in the corner. If I double click on one of those to open it, I can fill it with a different color. All I have to do is hold down the shift key to constrain the fill to the active pixels, and hold down the option key and tap delete on a Mac. That's Alt Backspace on a PC, and I can change the color. And when I save that, it updates all four jewels because they were all instances of that same smart object. And if I save that, it updates the image and the reflection on the main image. And it's just that simple to work with smart objects and make reflections in Photoshop that has smart objects. This has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.